Hey there, this is Betsy Veldman, and I am here to show you my colorful take on the tea dyeing technique. I'm going to show you kind of the same principle, but using Kool-Aid instead of tea. I have a pitcher of hot water, um, some plain white vinegar, a bunch of clear glasses, and uh, different flavors of Kool-Aid. I have two packs of each flavor. And I also have a half cup measuring cup. I'm going to add a half a cup of warm water and a half a cup of vinegar to each glass. This glass here I already had my cherry Kool-Aid drink mix, the powder, in the glass already. And I'm going to add, like I said, a half a cup of warm water and a half a cup of vinegar. I did a little reading online as to why you should use uh, vinegar when creating dyes. And it said it has something to do with um, the fact that the vinegar will stretch your quantity of dye without um, reducing the color like water can. It doesn't um, dilute the color like water does. That wa that's why if you use vinegar, you can stretch your dyes a little further. All right, so I'm going to finish off here my glasses. I'm going to pour two packs of the Kool-Aid into each glass. And you can experiment with different flavors to get the different colors. Um, I prepared my project ahead of time and I'm noticing here that I used a generic, um, I think it was a black cherry, for um, the pink color that I achieved in my card example. And that one, that turned out more pink. So you can experiment with different colors, um, even using the generic brands of drink mix might give you some different colors. Alright, so I have all my Kool-Aid packets emptied into the glasses and now I'm going to fill with the half cup water, half cup vinegar solution. Okay, so each color has half a cup of each water and vinegar and then I'm just going to go ahead and stir those all up. I am using a plastic spoon here um, I read that a lot of times metal can react to different dyes and um, possibly the vinegar. So just to be safe, I'm going to use a plastic spoon. You might not have any problems if you use metal, but better safe than sorry. All right, now there's some different things you can you can do with the dye. You can dye papers, you could dye fibers. So I'm going to start off with, I have some tags which were die cut from watercolor paper and I stamped and heat embossed them with clear powder using some of the images from the Mendy medallion set. It's really hard to see the stamping here but you will see it in a minute. And I'm going to just dip dye these. I'm going to get a two colored effect and that uh, embossing is going to resist the Kool-Aid dye which is kind of a fun thing. You'll be able to see the design here in a minute. There you go. And then I'm going to take the other end and I'll dip it in my red. That dip dye look is kind of hot right now. I know my my 10 year old daughter has a lot of shorts and jeans and tops that are dip dyed. So it's kind of a fun effect. And adding that stamped and stamping with the um, embossing with the re resist makes that embossing really show up and pop out. It's kind of a fun look. We'll try another tag here. And the amount of time that you leave your items in the dye is going to affect the color. If you want a lighter color, just leave it in for a short amount of time. If you want a darker color, you leave it in for a little bit longer. Now I did not use, I just used warm water out of the tap uh, because the items that I'm dyeing, I'm not really worried about color fastness. I'm not going to be laundering these items or anything. I'm just going to use them on my card. So if you were going to dye something with Kool-Aid that was going to be laundered, you would probably want to do 
the boiling on the on the stove and that sort of thing. But if you're just working with little embellishments for your cards and, and that sort of thing, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, here I'm going to dye some felt. This is just uh, vintage cream felt from Paper Tray. And it doesn't take too long. That felt really absorbs the color. I think when I did when I did mine, really, I left it in there about 10 minutes, and I felt like it it really soaked the color through and got a good saturation of color. But you can play around with that and leave it in longer for darker colors, or just a short amount of time for paler colors. You can also dye um, the twine. Here I have some rustic cream twine and this is super easy. You just take a length, kind of ball it up and uh, swish it around in there, let it absorb that dye. Take my spoon just kind of make sure it's all submerged in the dye. And again, like I said, it really doesn't take very long. I think I left mine in there about 10 minutes. You just kind of pop them out and check them every once in a while, and when you get a color you like, just go ahead and pull them out. I just laid everything out on a paper towel and let it dry. If you're uh, short on time or impatient, you can also uh, definitely use your heat gun to speed the process too. Uh, when you when you heat the felt, you might have some shrinkage, so that's something to take into account. But look at there, that was only in there for a few seconds and it's already really absorbed that color. Well, that's all there is to the Kool-Aid dyeing. It's super easy and a really fun way to change up your basic supplies. So I hope you get a chance to play around with it and enter our Stamp Affair Challenge for this category. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. This has been Betsy Valdman for Paper Tray Inc.